And I'll start off by saying I received an email from a, a worried mother about her son a few weeks ago. I still remember it. She was saying that, you know, her son's in, her, in his early 20s. She's concerned about him because he doesn't leave the house. She said he's never, have a, never had a girlfriend. He's not working at the moment. He doesn't really have any friends and he plays video games pretty much. And she's tried to speak to him and encourage him to go to a men's group, you know, take action in his life, go to the gym. Um, but it's hard to get through to him. So she asked me, could I give some advice? So I emailed her, I gave her the best advice to my knowledge at this time. But it really got me thinking. I, I, I can, honestly, can't put it into words. I really understand her worry and, and what he's going through because I've been through that. Before I become a coach and coached other people in the area of social anxiety, fear um, and, and confidence in this area, uh, that was me in my early 20s. I was paranoid, I couldn't come out the house or if I came out the house, I would just like put my head down. I was like embarrassed to be in public. I was always paranoid. It was all in my head at the time, but I didn't realize that until I overcame these fears. I thought people were judging me. I thought they were thinking bad things. I thought they knew that I had anxiety. So I was very afraid about displaying the symptoms of fear. And if I had to go to the shop, everything felt rushed. So it wasn't a nice way to live. And I suffered with panic attacks, shame. And it was just, it's just such a difficult thing when you're going through it. But on a positive note, you can overcome it because I've overcome it and many of you have and I've helped many of you and there's many people around the world. But there's a couple of things and I said this, um, I said this to the lady about her son, to her, right? Now this is, if, if you're not committed, no one can really force you to do it. So obviously if any of you are going through that now and you're really struggling, speak to someone quickly, your parents or get help as quick as you can, a friend, anyone you can talk to that you trust. But I think the individual has really got to take responsibility because at the time I didn't really open up about my struggles that much so not many people could help me. That was what was keeping me stuck, you know, my pride was getting in the way and it really was a vicious circle of addiction, you know, um, watching movies, eating junk food. It was just like being in, in, in darkness, it was, it was horrible, you know, and then the more you stay in, the more you think about life and the stresses of life and why you're not successful and how you're different to other people and how they're successful. You start all this vicious self-judging uh, conversation continues. So you've got to get to a stage where enough is enough and you've really got to commit to wanting to change. But I understand, like, for people that are going through this, obviously like this uh, woman's son, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. You can't just face every fear in one day. So it's a gradual process, it's one step at a time. So everybody's level of difficulty is different. So for some people I would say, just leave the house, go for a walk, and many people could do it. Some people can't do that. They might need someone to take them out. Uh, for other people that can go for a walk but can't socialize or make eye contact, I'd say when you go into the supermarket, or if you're buying food in the groceries, just try and practice holding eye contact in for a few seconds. Say a little bit more than you usually would. I know these are things that I struggled with. Um, eye contact, pronouncing my words, not panicking when someone looks at me, um, going blank, overthinking too much when it wasn't necessary. Instead of just saying, thank you, how was your day? Uh, thanks for the shopping, here's the money. Have a great day or have a great weekend or when is your day off? You know, learning to do a little bit of small talk, but I know it's not easy when you're under pressure until you get used to it. And there's a certain change of mindset that you have to kind of switch into. And that's kind of the advice I gave this lady for her son because this is what helped me, it's how I changed. I listened to Les Brown, heard his motivation, something in me clicked in a good way, something changed. I was like, I can't live like this anymore and I can't keep using the conversation, well, what if I fail? What if I get judged? What if I get nervous in front of people? That's gonna be really humiliating and embarrassing. That's what was keeping me in the house. I had to get into a place where I'd say, well, if that happens, that happens. It's not the end of the world. It's not like I'm gonna be the first person that got nervous and anxious and embarrassed and made a fool of themselves in a social situation. Millions of people experience that. But it's, 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 it's how I respond. It doesn't really matter about what other people say or think about me. So you have to start building this more positive attitude towards you. And you've got to allow yourself to fail. And you've got to tell yourself, well, if that does happen, I'm going to practice again. It's, it's not one opportunity and you're done. It's not a video game, it's real life, which is brilliant. That gives you hope and that is true. So the whole mindset or some of the mindset has to change 
before you leave the house. You have to, basically, what I'm saying is what I said to this lady for a son, he has, he has to make a commitment. And uh, if he made a commitment, uh, if sh she gives me permission, which she did ask me, I would help her son with all the knowledge that I've got or help her to help her son so he can help himself or anybody for that matter. But if someone doesn't want the help, then you can't force them because that's their right, obviously, as an adult. And people can say no, you can't force them. If you force them, then it's like bullying and abuse. You can't do that. So in the same way with yourself, I had to say, right, I want to change. And I started off with the small things for me. For me, um, walking outside my area was a big deal. Going into shops and just having a bit more small talk was a big deal. And a massive deal was going down to Fitzroy Lodge, the amateur boxing club, walking in. I was scared just to, just to speak to them. I was so nervous when I was 20. But I did it. And uh, even though I was all like, they were, like a lot of times when I talk to people, people would often say, well, sorry, what did you say? I can't hear you. Because I was mumbling, quiet, stuttering, stumbling, awkward. So I've come from that place, which is what gives me so much confidence that you can change, you can do it, I've done it. And I know it's cliche, it's cheesy, and people always say it when they're successful, but it is true, if I can do it, then anybody else can do it. They really can. But you've got to, you've got to discipline yourself. You've got to take that um, leap of faith and take that first step and go through situations. You're going, to get, you're going to mess up from time to time. You are, it's inevitable. But if you keep working at it, you will iron out those social mistakes that, that are mistakes to you and you will get more confident and the awkwardness will start to go away as you practice more, go to the gym, you know, um, take action on your day in life, speak to family more, communicate more of your parents and people around you. It's raining now, of all the times to rain, I was really enjoying this video. So it's more like a lifestyle change, but of course it, it starts with leaving the house because the house is an addiction when someone's got anxiety or social phobia or an anxiety disorder. The house is protection, it represents safety. Don't wanna get hurt, don't wanna um, be open, don't wanna be judged, but you're, you're gonna judge yourself in such a harsh way, more than anyone would ever judge you. No one could ever judge me more harshly than my own mind did when I was in those spaces of darkness and depression. So when you start coming out of that, you gain confidence and you don't care as much as to what people think. Most people, to be honest, most people are friendly once you get to talk to them. If you're respectful and you're honest and they can see you're sincere and you're genuine and you're not trying to manipulate them or be disrespectful, people are all right, people treat you quite well. Of course there's some people that are nasty, but that's life. You know, you've got to kind of toughen up and get past that and focus on the positives. So going to the gym, most of it is getting out of the house, socializing, exercising, having a goal in life or a focus, which everyone's got if they take the time to figure it out. Hopefully that will eventually lead you on to getting paid to do what you love. That's another story for another video I can talk more about. I do that in my business coaching for clients. So it's a whole, um, you know, it's a whole change of thinking, but your thinking won't really change until your actions change. The thinking catches up with the actions. So when you're stuck in that place of tiptoeing, and being nervous and then you start realizing that you, you, when you're in your head and you're suffering with these anxieties you think that people have got a problem with you people have got a problem with this anxiety but really they haven't it's, it's you we are, we're our own worst enemy to begin with which is why I know that we can become our own best friend but that won't happen if you don't get help and leave the house and go for walks and eventually push yourself or encourage yourself into social situations and it doesn't matter if you stutter if you get nervous, I know it's going to matter to you, but what I'm saying is it's better to face it. It's better to go through that, grow through it, and then it's, you're going to overcome it, and then you're going to be in a better place. And I can't tell you how happy I was when I was in my 20s eventually, because I was in the same position as this um, lady's son. I was in exactly the same position. The only difference is he's addicted to video games at that age. I didn't play video games. I stopped at 19, but I was addicted to movies. Same kind of thing. And eating and hiding and just being on my own. It was such a hot, it was horrible. But when I got out of it, I got a girlfriend. I went gym. I, I remade positive friends. And eventually I got employed. I started my own business, started teaching people. So there's no, there's no limits to how far you can come, but it all starts with leaving the house, getting help, speaking to someone you trust. You know, you're kind of lucky today because back in my day, 
It, mental health wasn't spoken about, especially for men, anxiety, the word social anxiety. There wasn't all these opportunities, right? I'm not saying that it's not hard for you. Of course it's hard for anybody, but I'm saying you have, you have more resources. You've got someone now telling you that it's okay, there's nothing to be ashamed of and giving you a solution. And I didn't have that when I started. It was more the opposite. People would have ridiculed me. They would have judged me. They would have found me weird for saying I couldn't leave the house because I had paranoid anxiety and was paranoid at making eye contact and talking to people in case they judged me, in case they got nervous. People wouldn't have really, um, wouldn't have really been able to understand that or comprehend that unless they were going through it. And if they were, they probably wouldn't have said. So the honest dialogue really does help, which is why um, I share my story and, and I try my best to be as honest as I can because that's how I'm going to give you the most value. So yeah. Um, come on my live streams. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I will take you through um, long-term mentorship on how you can improve this area. Now, if some of you want to take the next step and you've gotten enough value and you want to do personal coaching with me, my paid coaching, my email address is below. You can send me an email and I can let you know the full details of coaching, how it works, the price, the location, when it starts and who I work with because I, I don't work with anyone. I only work with people that are committed because if you're not committed, then I wouldn't be able to help you. You're not going to listen and it's just not going to work. But yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm going to do more videos, a series on this, a whole series on that predicament because it, can't, it doesn't just end in one video. Being stuck in house, I totally get it. It feels like the whole world is too scary. You know, you just want, you're kind of doing that. You're like, I can't deal with life. I've been there, but I've overcome it. I've helped thousands of clients and many of you on this video have overcome it or you're in the process. So hopefully... Um, this young man, um, I, I believe he'll overcome it. It was a few weeks ago that his mum spoke to me in email. So, um, yeah, to be continued, all right? I'm, I'm going to go off today. I'm a bit tired. I've been working a lot, enjoying myself, training, dieting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Any questions, let me know in the box below. Please like, share the video. As always, if you want to inquire about coaching for confidence, social anxiety, my email address is in the box below, and I'll usually get back to you within 48 hours, all right? Appreciate the support. Fearless.